everyone, and welcome to this conversation presented by White House Custom Color. I'm Jed Toffer. Thanks for listening. You know, my wife Vicki and I have owned and operated our photography studio, V Gallery, for 20 years now. White House has been our lab for the last 16 of those years, and we could not be happier. White House is a family-run business, just like ours. If you haven't already, check them out at whcc.com. And if you want to drop me a line, feel free to email me at jed at whcc.com. Don't let what you do steal your joy. Don't let it define you. Use it to refine you. This is a big part of what Chris Duncan and I talked about at Imaging USA in Nashville several weeks ago. Chris is really focused on refinement in his business and in his life. I took away quite a bit from our conversation, but I think the main thing that resonated with me is the struggle of what refinement can look like. When a weapon or a tool is refined in a forge, it's thrust into an intense heat. Then it's taken out of the fire and flame and beaten with a hammer in order to harden it. Then the process is repeated. I think that's what refinement looks like for us sometimes. It isn't always pretty. In fact, it can be painful. But many times it's necessary in order for us to get to where we need to be. I think Mr. Duncan knows this. He's lived it, and he continues to learn from it. In fact, as you'll hear, he has about 18% more to go. Every time I do this, you, I feel like, you know, when you watch the like a Senate hearing or something, and they're like, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, a, they always lead forward. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. And they don't have to. They probably don't have to. In those scenarios, they, uh, they don't have and to do that. Every once in a while, they go but, like, yeah, they, I was thinking about that last night, how they covered the mic and then look. And I was like, does that even really help either? I mean, if the mics are sensitive enough, surely that's not going to help. It'd be funny if one of them just did, I think this chairman's a pain in the butt. Yeah. <laughs> and where you could hear it. They pick that stuff up all the time. Yes. We've we've seen it more than once. In just today's. pretend I'm asking you an important question. I'm right. Not, I just, right. Just gonna... This is a stalling tactic. <laughs> <Just> yeah. <on. laughs> so I wanted to... Uh, I wanted to talk to you about you give a you you give a talk, right? Well, you've probably several different several talks. Times. Yes, <laughs> but but what are you talking about lately? Because I went to your, I saw you have workshops too, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So to to figure out what it is that we're going to kind of tackle today from an educational standpoint, I guess you could say, what is it that you are all hyped up about as of late? Well, when when you ran into me, you said you come with a topic. You know, I did. You come in and kind of, you kind of want your brain empty, you right. know, no expectations. And I kind of thought about that. I'm like, man, we've done lots of things in our career and we've had lots of great experiences. And I tried to boil it to one word. And I think that one word is refine. Refine. A refinement. Refining. Refinement. Yes. Word, word, the root word <laughs> is refine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Well, we'll, we'll go down that road. Start off by telling me who you are. My name is Chris Duncan. I'm from Lubbock, Texas. And if you don't know where that is, you probably <laughs> can't find it. <laughs> You're not going to find it. No, but we are home of the fighting matadors of Texas Tech University, mm-hmm. Red Texas Raiders. Texas Tech. Yes. So um, wait, you have a special place in your heart um, for today's game then. Correct? Absolutely. Yes. Patrick Mahomes is is yes. is playing today. Yes. And I'm sure people aren't listening to this today. So this would be the, no, in, the AFC be, right. championship game. Right. Yes. We don't know as of yet who is going to triumph. Well, we have pretty strong predictions, at least. You have very strong feelings about it, I'm <laughs> yes. sure. Yes, I have a cereal box uh, that my daughter got me for Christmas that has Patrick Mahomes on it. Yeah. And you can only get it in Kansas City at Kivos or some, yeah. some I don't know. Yeah, but she got you one. <laughs> yes, she worked at a gift basket store, mm. and the lady found it and put was putting in gift baskets, and she thought that was great to say, "Dad, look, it's a." And he's, Deanna's like, "You could not leave that on display." <laughs> he's, he, I would. He's such a stud. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty exciting. You know, last year Tech went to the Final Four, yep. played in the championship, and a heartbreaking loss. Yeah, that was brutal. So yeah, it's so yes. Lubbock, Texas. You've had a business there. For how long? That's a tough question. People always ask me how long we've done this. F- professionally, 2002. Mm-hmm. I don't think we made it real until 2008. What, what does that mean? I, I like that you said that, but I'm very curious as to what you mean by that. 
just just the struggles and like, is this a career path that can support a family mm. without a without another source of income? Mm. You know, I was working another full time job with my dad's an electrician, mm -hmm. and then I was working part time with him. And then as photography grew, it kind of you know those scales. One is all, and then so they that was like eat. a transitionary period. For yes, you. and I, I did, did the same. Yeah, and I did that um, for two reasons. One, financially. Yeah. Um, and, and don't ever want to ignore that's really what we do this for. I mean, right. we can get all fluffy and sure, but it's really financial. Right. Um, and two, I really wanted to honor my dad. Um, he mm. had, he had gone through, you're going to make me cry, Jed. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> you're not going to make me cry. I'm going to make myself you cry. Are. And, uh, he had gone through a rough time, had a pretty tragic accident. Oh. And so felt like I needed a. Did that happen early on? And so that's it why it you... 05. It happened in 05. So you stuck it out a little longer. I did stick it out a little bit longer. And at that point, um, it's a long story to make it short. Deanna and I already married. We already had a child at that mm -hmm. time. She was born in 2000. So it's easy to know her age. Right. <laughs> She'll be 20 this right. year. So right. she was 05. That makes she was, it simple. Yeah, she was five that year. And uh, so Deanna was running a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And I was working part-time for my dad. And we were going to... We had kind of put in our two-year notice... <laughs> For, you know, two week or, okay, our anniversary is May 31st. I'm like, what a great way to start. So that was the day Dan, I decided that I would quit my dad, go full time. Yeah. And we're, and I'm working in the mornings, eight to noon. Right. Tr getting the guys lined up, getting materials we need for jobs. Afternoon, I'd run, do photography. Right. And May 17th, my dad falls off a 21 foot roof, breaks his back, breaks his hip, crushes pelvis, broke, breaks one wrist, punctures a lung. Right lays on the ground for 20 minutes until someone finds him. Oh, come on. Yeah, he was at the lake house. He was, um, there's a development, a lake about 90 minutes away from Lubbock and he was wiring some houses as that development was growing. And, and there was nobody around initially. You know, some, the guy had gone, I guess, to go get something and came back. So, you know, Deanna, if she was here, I'd really balk because she says that's the day she saw the dream and my eyes die. Oh. Because I was, the next day, I'm full time. Yep, you went right back. I'm full time. I mean, what do you do? Yeah, right, right. No, you're full time. Of course. And uh, hired some people. My dad, thank the Lord, recovered. Yeah. Still has a few things, but he's walking. Right. You know, he can still work, right. just a little slower. Mm -hmm. And uh, then in 2008, we kind of started over. Okay, May 31st, I'm leaving. So, Dad, I've got whatever you do, stay away from ladders. Don't go <laughs> up <roofs>. any ladders. <laughs> don't get any roofs, <laughs> ladders. Don't even climb in the back of your Somebody truck. Somebody else can do that. <laughs> yes. Don't even get up in the truck. <laughs> Watch you, out for curbs. We have I people mean, for that, Dad. Yes. Any, <laughs> any elevation change, oh. just avoid completely. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. So, uh, so then that it, it worked out. So that makes sense. The the 2002 to 2008 that 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 was a, a bumpy transition for you for, yes. for different reasons. But and then in 2008 you went. I went full time. But and that was when the recession hit us too. Yeah. So Good there's timing, the, right. so there's that. Yes. And Deanna, in that meantime, who had never thought photography was a real job. Uh huh. You know, you need a real job. You've got real debt job. and a family, and we have a kid. And the heard mortgage, the real oh, job stuff. You've before. heard the real job right. stuff. Right. Yeah. Uh, she became the first full full time employee of CJ Duncan she Photography. Did. <laughs> okay. Well. So it's. I like how that works. You know, so somewhere between 05 and 08, I don't know the year. Yeah. Um, there was transition at the nonprofit. She left, and became the studio manager per se, and has been the lead manager, marketer, sales pro. Um, telling me how to do things better and helping me stay sharp and <laughs> CEO per se, I guess. So how long did it take you at that point even? Let's go Let's go to 2008 when you made that decision and then the recession hits, but how long did it take you through that process to realize that this is, this is it, this is what we're going to do, all our eggs are in this basket and we have to make this work, we're going to make this work? Like what did that look like at the time? Yeah, I don't really remember. Yeah, you know, it I, was a blur. I think some of it was a blur. Of course. Um, I remember looking forward to that day when I didn't have to put on a tool belt uh -huh. and I didn't have to crawl under a house or get in an attic, <laughs> but it kind of felt weird. The, I do remember part of the transition that was hardest, and that was for me and Deanna to figure out how to work together mm. yeah. full time, not in passing like, hey, you coming home from work, it's afternoon, right. you know, it's like. I start trying to do tasks and she's like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? 
<laughs> well, when you do this, you don't understand. I've been doing this for a year now. Right. You don't know what you're doing. Step off. I've got a system in place. <laughs> yes. You're going to mess it all up. And so, you know, in hindsight, we didn't have that conversation of, what are you going to do tomorrow, Chris, when this is your full time or in 30 days or in 60 days mm -hmm. or in, we never really had that conversation. Mm -hmm. And that, that's something we obviously should have had. Right. <laughs> but that's part of the refinement, I think. Well, that's what I was getting to because you're, you're, so your, your, your root word is refine refinement. Mm -hmm. What does it look, what does that look like for you guys? Like how, what's the process or, or, you're more cognitive of things now, so you're maybe doing things more intentionally, but what is that? How does that manifest? I think it's small little adjustments you make along the way. I think when we, when you start out in this craft or probably any craft mm -hmm. that takes not only a technical objective skill, but it also has to, you have to have different skills that aren't objective, mm -hmm. you know, forget shutter speeds and ISOs and right. focal lengths and all that. Um, you know, I think the word of refinement I thought of is like, if you're going to refine oil or petroleum or even that's a long process under pressure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, and they don't, they can't do it overnight. They can't do it. One, it takes multiple steps to do that. And so I think that's kind of where it's like looking back, it's easy to see and you know, the power of hindsight, but there were small little refinements along the way that we were so blessed to have it. It's hard. It's you try to find the good and everything. When my dad fell off the roof and I went back full time, I was no longer a foreman for BNR Electric. I was BNR Electric. Mm -hmm. So now I'm bidding jobs. Mm. I'm meeting with contractors because you I, had to. I'm making sure we have enough material to finish this job. Right. And that job ha material has to go to that job. It can't go to this job, or right. then everything gets out of whack. Right. Um, so in a sense, you were placed circumstantially into a position where you were forced yes. to, to refine. That pressure. You yes. had to. Yes, I had to. Right. And, um, and so that looking back, you see that at the time, you're like, this no, is ridiculous. You're right. just trying to live. <laughs> <laughs> yes. At the time. Right. And so um, and a mentor of mine, when I got into photography around 2008 is when I met Tony Corbell. Mm -hmm. And he's become a good friend and a great mentor. And probably anyone that can hear my voice has heard that name or if they're in this industry has had experience with him. So I've been blessed to have a personal relationship with him. And he would say, Chris, you're going to get to 80% of where you want to go probably in the next year, 18 months. Mm -hmm. That at least of that 20%, it's going to take you until they put you in your grave. Right. And you may not even get there then. Right. But it's that little. And so that's something that I've always remembered. It's, and I thought of it as equating to golf. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sure. when you take up golf, you're shooting a buck 20, 108. You take 24 golf balls with you. And you're like, okay, here's what I need. I need new equipment. <laughs> so you go buy new, new clubs, and now you can just hit the ball farther out of bounds. <laughs> yeah. I see. I've tried the golf thing, and I don't think it's an 80 20. I think it's a 20 80 for me. <laughs> With golf. But it doesn't take long to break 100. <laughs> okay, sure. And it doesn't take much long to get to 95. Right. But it takes a little, it takes some turn practice, yeah. effort, and good yeah. technical skills to break 90 and then mm -hmm. 80. And then when you're getting to breaking par, yeah. you know, you're the top one tenth of 1%. Right. <laughs> right. Especially consistently. Yes. And right. I think any career you do is like that. You're going to make leaps and bounds early. And the problem is not, not say, okay, I'm here. I've look how far I've come. Right. I've defined now where I am. Right. No, you still got to refine cause you're still a long way from par. Yes, <laughs> that's right. That's actually a good analogy. You're a long way from par. How do you, how do you do it? How do you stay in the, how do you stay in that mindset? How do you retain that frame? Um, well, for me, I have a couple of things on my desk that I like to, you know, little sayings. Okay. Um, one has always been comparisons will rob you of your joy. Mm. Um, so I try to stay focused on what we're doing. It's so easy to compare yourself to some, especially when you come to an event like Image in USA. Oh my, yes. <laughs> yes. You know, um, so that's, that was a challenge for me to uh, and decide I don't have to be Tony Corbell. Right. I don't want to be Tony Corbell. I right. love what he does. You don't have to be, you don't want to be, and you cannot be. Yes, and I cannot that's be. that's him. And I can't be Jed Toffer, and I can't right. be Vicky, and I, I mean, and all right. those different things. So that was a, I had to make that mental mind shift. Um, and 
the, I have a note that my wife wrote me the day I left and, and there's a little, or the day I quit my dad that May 31st, 2008. And she talks about how she's thought you now have a real job now. And I'm so proud of you. And she gave me a little pig with wings on it <laughs> and it sits right on my desk. So every day I see that pigs fly that, cause that was the day yeah. that pigs fly. Yeah. And she goes, now's the day that you can fly. And so I think of that and I have a picture of my grandmother who died in 96. She was a painter. And when I, and I would spend a lot of time with her. She painted China porcelain, you know, so we have some of her pieces. Like my granddad would take slide pictures of elk and birds and fish, and she would paint those on plates. So you could have a full play setting of the saltwater fish oh, of the Northwest. On. You know, it's really cool. Um, so I spent a lot of time painting with her and she was so instrumental in my artistic growth. And I remember a story. My mom brought me a Dukes of Hazard coloring book. Uh huh. Yeah. I was a fan. And I go to, <laughs> I'm at my grandmother's while they're going to work and I pull out this coloring book and she's like, where'd you get that? I was like, mom gave it to me. I'll have a talk with your mom later. She did. Yes. Was she, Daisy she, on the cover? She, no, she did. And she goes, well, are you going to color? I said, yeah. She goes, no. And she takes my coloring book and I'm like, you're the meanest grandmother ever. <laughs> And it took me till I was probably 30 to realize the power of this. And she says, if I let you draw in that coloring book, you are going to do what someone else expects oh, you to do. Oh, yeah. Don't let that coloring book define what you're going to create. Mm, mm, mm. And she gives me a blank piece of paper. Oh my, okay. And, and here's the colors. Yeah. Now draw. Yeah. And you're just like, oh. Yeah. You know, that's brilliant. Though. That's brilliant. Especially for such a young mind. Yes. Right? And at that time I was like, I want my coloring book back. <laughs> yeah. But you, it was in there. And like you said, later on, it hit harder. Yes. It hit harder. Older. It did. But it was in there yes. when you were that little boy. Yes. Right. Yes. And so I think that's been one of the refinements is I can only be Chris Duncan. Mm. And that's the best gift I can give. Hopefully that I can give anybody, mm -hmm. especially my spouse and my children and my colleagues and my friends. What sort of measures then, this kind of goes back to my first question, but I want to, I want to hit this hard. Like what things intentionally do you do to remind yourself of that? Because don't we forget easily? Like you said, you come to Imaging USA. Mm -hmm. It's hard not to compare yourself. Absolutely. You get on Facebook. It's hard not to compare yourself. That's not to say anything about Instagram, which is just basically set up for everyone to compare themselves. Mm -hmm. So what do you have to do on a regular basis to retain the healthy mindset that you're talking about. Okay. Well, it's, it hasn't always been healthy. I'll, okay. You know, I'll, Good confession. It hasn't always been healthy. <laughs> um, I started, and this is where a lot of, this is funny. It's, it helps me and it frustrates Deanna. And it's just one of those Perfect. things we've had to learn is I will do projects that have nothing to do with photography, but are very creative. And she doesn't like that? No. Cause I'm taking now, she doesn't mind me doing a project. I just, I happen to tend to do them when we have to something else to do. I see. <laughs> that makes more sense. Yes. Have you finished that, uh, that album or that order yet? No, but I did learn, I did write a new song on the guitar. <laughs> but I did make a paper mache kite. Yes. It only took me 17 hours. Yeah. And I did stain the fence and I did. <laughs> well. Staining the fence, I, my, my wife know. would actually be happy about and that. And I did, you know, I, right. whatever right. it is. All the other stuff. All the other stuff. But that took you away from the things that needed I, to be done maybe I, sometimes. Yes, and I think, I think the monotony of a day-to-day -day is what drains people. Mm. There's a short film called Alike, A-L-I-K-E. I don't know that one. And it talks about how the monotony of a day-to-day -day routine can just take away creativity and joy in life. Mm. And it's, if you just Google or YouTube a like sure. short film, and it's really brilliant. And I show my students that every year uh, to say, don't let what you do steal your joy, right? Def right. Don't let it define you. Use it to re refine you. Okay. Don't, oh, I like that. Yes. Don't let it define you. Use it to refine you. Yes. And that's why I came up with that word. I'm like, I think that's what we're doing every day. We're getting little nuggets. We make mistakes which is education. Failure is just education. And you're in that 20%. Like you're, you're climbing the ladder in that 20%. Oh, yes. And constantly yes. refining yes. who you are. May I might be at 18. And what, <laughs> right, right, right. You got, a, you got most of that 20% yeah. left to go. Yes. Uh, but I think that's a really good point, and I see that in my own life, actually, and it makes, it makes a lot of sense to me. Business-wise, 
what does it look like business wise? Business wise, um, I think I'm going to answer that probably in a longer way. Good, because I'm involved in this industry as a as a business owner. Mm-hmm. Our, we're all in. This is our sole source of income. This is it. This is it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and nothing else. No investment portfolios. No real estate. This is it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm involved as an educator. Mm-hmm. You know, and different things in the f- local affiliate level. I guess you call it leadership government governance of the industry. Right. And I think we spend too much time worrying about where people start and not enough time about where people need to go. So unpack that one. I I hate phrases like those people, oh, they got a camera for Christmas, so now they're a photographer. Good for them. Oh. Good for them. Oh, this is a bit of a rebuke. Yes. Why do you care where they started? Okay. I love it. Right? Yeah. Gotcha. I started as an electrician. Right. 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 So it doesn't mean your history is not important. Don't don't sure. misunderstand that. But sure. I think we spend too much time of like, well, you used to do this. Uh-huh. You know, and if I'm in a conversation, people talk about the good old days of the industry. Yeah. I leave the room. Really? Yes. Because... I believe the best days are always ahead of us. Right. And they certainly can be. Yes. And if someone's, and at least in our affiliate and our local group, if someone says the good old days, I will rebuke them. Not publicly. Take them to the side. Well, I'll just say, when you say the good old days, everyone else that hears that think this is not good. Right. That's, well, that's the implication. That's the implication. Even if that's not what you're trying to get across it's it's certainly especially for newer people or younger people that are less experienced or weren't part of those quote unquote good old days yes you're inferring that oh you were part so it's already divisive like it's, right out right out of the already gate already divisive am i getting this it's already divisive right absolutely right and when you have associations set up with aspiring members and professional members you're where, you, com- where you're, you've actually you're created wa- two you're, separate camps you're walking in the door divided i get you okay you right know. right right off the bat right off the bat so so part of that question you ask is how do you keep that mindset mm-hmm. is i'm always like okay where am i going mm-hmm. not where have i been okay where i've been helps me know where i might go mm-hmm. but it doesn't need to define where i okay. go okay i like that too which is also a piece of the refinement piece. Like Absol- you're, you're constantly working on moving forward. Absolutely. Right? Because you can't refine what's already happened because it already happened. That's right. That's correct. You, you can can't be- put the oil back in the olive. Right. <laughs> you right. Can, you can't. Right. Okay. And, and so that's part of my refinement process and having other artistic value, uh, other artistic ventures, mm-hmm. whether it be playing the guitar, mm-hmm. whether it be cooking, um, I heard that about you. Actually. Yes, whether it be cooking, um, hosting, you know, hospitality. I think that's a creative outlet. Mm-hmm. I listened to one of your podcasts recently. So if you're listening to this now, it was a long time ago, bro. <laughs> it, was, it was in 2019, and the guy said you're made to create. Yeah. If you solve a problem, you're creative. Yeah. Whether it be on a spreadsheet or in a photographic sense or yeah. whatever. And I thought, man, that's great. And I think that's refinement. Yeah. He brought up the spreadsheet. I remember. I think that was Todd Van Fleet, and he yes. brought up that spreadsheet and that that hit me in the face because I don't associate spreadsheets with creativity you know and I mean? yet give it a second. And of course you can associate creativity with spreadsheets, right? Absolutely. Any problem solving is creativity. Sure. That, and that's, that's what I got out of that whole talk. Yes. Yeah. It's just problem solving is creativity. So this year I created a couple board games and what? <laughs> My paper mache comment was a joke, but now you're kind of going. Yes, like you I, made some board games. I created some board games, and <laughs> and the, and you can see how this might frustrate Deanna. I can. I really and, can. Um, if we if we have time to talk about that, we can. But I have I've had to mentally. F- I I don't work exercise a lot, and that's another thing that frustrates Deanna. I do have a punching bag in the garage. <laughs> That I can go hit. Well, you're, you seem to be like you're in pretty good shape. Well, you, my gut's below the table, Jeff. Yeah, okay. Well, so is mine. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, and, and that comes from another refinement. 20 years ago, I wouldn't have it a punching bag. Yeah. I would have just hit the wall and then get the drywall out, tape out. And, oh. Yeah. You know, not a 
that's a strong confession. I'm not proud of that, but <laughs> I understand what you're saying. You know, mm-hmm. you know, you have a problem when you find out where the studs are to make sure you don't hit yeah, that. Yeah, you don't want to hit that part. <laughs> yes. you're then, like, then you're going to the hospital. I think that that's right. very intentional. I'm about to put a hole in this wall. Of, Where's the best place to hit it? A lot of less, gi- <laughs> a lot less give <laughs> yes. where those studs are. <laughs> you know, so, but it's been so when people have to make a conscious decision to go to the gym or to go this, I have told I've had to make a conscious decision to. What is something else I can learn? One year, I told myself I'm going to learn a post-production technique every week. And so I just had to set out time to watch a YouTube video or yeah. creative live or whatever that was yeah. and then practice it. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes in the camera room, I'm like, today I want to only use one light on the whole session. And he's like, no, we've got to sell this work. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I'm like, okay, I'll compromise. I'm going to use one light. For half the session. For part of it. For right, part of it. Right. Get the, get what you need to I'm get. I'm going to take out the two kickers, the headlight, the background light. And I'm going to take that out and use one light. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's only going to be my strip box. Mm-hmm. And let's see what I can do. And get a completely different look. And get a completely different right. look. And that's just something else I can put in my toolkit. Um, I want to make sure I, sh- I photograph. I'm not going to take my 24 to 70 in my bag now. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take a 35 and a 50. Mm-hmm. You know, and so those are what I do for little refinements. It's a intentional... You're pushing yourself. It's an intentional little pushing. Aren't yes. you pushing yourself? Yes. And here's the thing. I can photograph 400 images in a session. Yeah. The photographer, the client never knows if right. they suck or not. Right. 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 <laughs> and that's a, and that's really, I think what, where people maybe think I'm refined more is I try not to put crap out there. Right. <laughs> They're not going to see that stuff. I'm going to show you. Right. That. Can you imagine if you bought a book and when you bought someone's book, you got all the rough drafts with nope, it? Nope. It would not work out. <laughs> it well. would not work out. Mm-mm. You know, I always wonder how many times did the chef say, don't take that to that table. I've got to remake it. Yeah. What's happening back there. Right. 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 Cause you know, it does. Absolutely. Sure. And absolutely. Sure. And I'm sure there's times chefs get in there and they get bored with saying, Oh, I have to cake another filet. Right. Oh man. Yeah. Can I just do something different? I hope it doesn't happen with steak too much, but you're probably right. You know? So, right. Right. And I think I've had some of the ones where they, and I think we get bored and I think we get that way. Oh, great. Another baby in a white wicker basket. You know what? I think you're right. I think you're right. And that's a, that's a, that's a big deal. It is because we're talking about, we're not, talking about a piece of meat we're talking about a little baby we're talking about a child we're talking about someone's pride and joy and they're coming to us as photographers for something amazing like they have that expectation yes but it can be difficult on the other side of that as the, as the business owner or the photographer or the creative to constantly have your a game yes and right and we have learned and it's of course it's not every day we try to learn Whenever a client comes in, we believe there's, we believe we were, we do this for two reasons. One, the camera is just an excuse to get to share something with somebody Mm -hmm. to be in their presence. Mm -hmm. That gives us an excuse to get together. Mm -hmm. And two, this is their first grandbaby, first child. They have all this pressure, right? And we're like, we got it. We understand. So you're there to but sometimes the I think, pressure? but I think, I think so. I think mm-hmm. part of that. And I think sometimes we forget we're like, Oh, it's just a baby which sounds so cold and, or it's just a high school senior. I would think that anybody that hasn't, maybe they haven't said the words, right? Maybe they haven't said those words out loud or even in their minds, but anyone that hasn't experienced those feelings, I think might be a little disingenuous with themselves. I would hundred percent right? agree. Right. But to that grandparent, it's everything. It's everything. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And can you imagine if you get on your plane going back home, another flight to Dallas? <laughs> no, right. no, this right. is a pretty big deal. Right, right. right. Please take it seriously, <laughs> Mr. Pilot. Take it seriously. <laughs> this is a big deal. <laughs> Gotta fly all these people yeah. into the air again. Crap. I, I better go. I've got one more heart surgery today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, right. and it's, and you know, that seems like a stretch to take, right. you know, heart surgery or flying a plane to photography. But I'm, I talked to, after my CPP class yesterday, a guy came up to me and I shared my story with my grandmother and how powerful I think mm-hmm. our job is, how we can influence lives and, you know, change a narrative in someone's life through a photograph. And he goes, I do school pictures. 
and I get looked down upon because I do school pictures. Yeah. He goes, you know, most people in America, the only photograph they have of themselves or of their children yeah. is their sixth grade portrait right. or fifth grade portrait. Right. The one I keep of my grandmother on my desk is from the church directory. Yep. <laughs> you yep. know, technically that's not a complicated thing. Right. Right. But boy, is it a cherished. It's a super important thing. It's absolutely thing. a super important thing. Right. And I think we have to remember that, you know, and so I think we have to think, and this is what Deanna says a lot. She goes, an image or a portrait is a tangible representation of what that person knows in their heart to be true. Mm. I like that. So you always get in a fight on your way to church. Can you imagine the fights families have on the way to the portrait session? Oh. How long will this take? Put on your clothes. Billy, stop messing with your hair. Whatever it is. Keep your legs together, Susie. You know, don't lift your skirt when on you get there. On the way get, there, right. You're right. Yeah. And so a kid or a family walks in like, this has got to be the worst. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it happens after they're there. Like so, it, it spills over. <laughs> Sometimes it does. You know, but I... And I think if we can take that, what we're going to create is going to be a tangible representation of their heart's picture. If we create a picture of them fighting in the car, mm. that is not what the mom. No, they, most, don't want, they don't want that. That's not what they want. Right. They want to see that and go, that's the children that love me. That's the husband that's going to yeah. stand beside me. That's yeah. that's the grandparents or parents that raised me yes. to be. To be who I am. That's right. hopefully what we can convey. Mm -hmm. Whether it's technically, pro hopefully it's technically proficient. I right. think that's important. I'm not trying to ignore that aspect sure. of it. Sure. I have, I have thought of one final question I want to ask you. Are you aware of something that needs to be refined <laughs> that you're dragging your feet on? What, what needs to be addressed that isn't yet? It's like part of that 18% that's just kind of hanging there. Hmm. Prob I'd have to say it's got to be the way I respond to Deanna mm. when there's a that I perceive as a criticism mm. and it's really a push. Oh, and okay. it's and it's really a this is something we need to be aware of because mm -hmm. you miss this. Are you defensive? Yes. Yes. I get defensive on that. Mm -hmm. Jed, if you came in and said, man, this is great, but it looks like, you know, you might want to try this or Tony could tell me that, oh. or I could go to the, Tony could tell you anything, <laughs> you know, or I could find someone else right. and they could tell me, but when Deanna says right. it, I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I'm going to go mow the yard now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> How many times has it happened where she's, she's told you something for like a year. Oh. And then someone like Tony comes along and suggests it like oh. almost haphazard. And you're like, you know what? That is the best idea ever. <laughs> That's when I hope I don't say that with an arms reach. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. You, right. And then if she's there, right. Yes. You're smacked upside yeah. the head. And for good reason. It's happened. I can't tell you how many times that that has happened on both, you know, in, our, in our relationship, but happens oh, yeah. on both sides. Yeah. And I think that's something. And that's, that's a, that's a thing in my brain that's, and I think we, I think we tend to, I had, the keynote guy this morning was awesome. You know, talking about Jim Quick. Yep, Jim you know, Quick. He did a great, it was great. And I hated, had to slip out a little early. Uh, and, but that was part of it. He's like, you have to exercise your brain. And I've heard that. And today it just kind of, like, I've never thought of that. You know, you think of well, my brain works as long as I'm breathing. Right, right. You know, right. my lungs are going to work in my well, heart. We always talk about exercise for our bodies and our lungs yes. and our hearts and everything yeah. else. But it does make sense. to, And it certainly lines up with refinement. Absolutely. Right. Yes. And so um, that's that's one thing I need to refine. And probably my quick wit back to her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> would probably Your response. My response. How you respond yes. to that. Yeah. And so that's. Thank you for being vulnerable oh, about that. Yeah. I didn't know what you were going to bring. <laughs> I thought you were going to be, oh, I need to crunch the numbers a little bit better. You know, I need to oh, learn how oh, to do the, this, that, or the other from a lighting standpoint. Or You know, I, I feel like I'm, I hate to say I feel like I'm confident. I feel like I could light anything. Yeah. I do. 
it may take me a week to figure it out. Right. I think I could do but it. But you could get there. I think right. I could get there. Right. Um, yeah, but this n- defensive thing with Deanna, that's <laughs> that's a lot tougher, isn't <laughs> that's it? That's a lot tougher. <laughs> you know? I um, do. I do. You know, like, how, how do you think I can sell this? There's not enough light in the eye. Oh. It's dramatic. <laughs> You know, what do you mean you can't sell it? I'm the artist. What's wrong with you <laughs> that you can't sell it? <laughs> oh, buddy, don't show it to him then. Oh, if you right, don't. yeah, leave it on the you leave it on the cutting room floor. I this is see, I'm gonna start sweating myself. It's gonna be it's gonna resonate just a bit too much. Yes, yeah, so I, I I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Do, let's let's do the important piece now and tell everybody where they can find you and where they can go and where well, you if live. If they're interested in any of the work we create, that's cjduncan.com, uh, Instagram, cjduncan. Hmm. Um, I'm on Twitter at findyourfocus. Oh, find your focus, right. <laughs> yeah, because mm-hmm. that's the retreat we started doing 10 years yeah. ago. That's like your workshops and stuff. I, right? I, no, I call it, I like to retreat. You like the word retreat. I do like the word right. retreat right. Um, because I think every being needs to have time and creation. Oh, it's like that. Yes. So you that's a big part of the experience. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't think you get a lot of um restor- restorative time yeah. in a conference room or in a hotel lobby. Right. I think you get it in creation. Okay. And so I'm uh, intrigued. I'm so, sure other people yeah. are too. And it's similar to what, you know, Jeff does with his uh Apex. The Apex group, yes. right? Yeah, I've been to that a couple of yeah, times. So, too. so you're familiar with how creation just does something to the soul and to the I mind am. and to the body. I am familiar. Yes. So, so that so you can also find our learning content in those retreats at find your learn dot find your focus dot org. Okay. Okay. So. Well, thank you. Thank you for this. I I I appreciate you taking the time. This is a this is always a busy convention with a million different things going on here at. Imaging USA 2020 in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. I'm glad you invited me, and you saved me probably $200 in the hour I would have spent on the trade shoe. <laughs> well, you can get after it now and make up for lost yes, time. Yes, sure <laughs> Thanks, brother. <laughs>